what I would like to say is, when I got into this, there was not even the word called holistic medicine. So that's 1973. They didn't have that word. If they did, I didn't know about it. And I just knew that my uh, traditional allopathic medicine was not really addressing, again, I didn't have the word, the cause of disease and seemed to be symptomatic. I went to a good school, Columbia Medical School. It's one of the top medical schools in the country, in the U.S. But I knew that they, as good as they were, didn't really get what it was about. And at that time, what I saw, again, without the word holistic healing, is that we really operate on multiple levels, a physical level, an emotional, mental, and spiritual. I'm also trained as a psychiatrist and family therapist, so clearly they were part of my consideration. Uh, we once ran a back pain clinic for residents, family practice residents, and we focused on family therapy because the relationship was usually the cause, often associated or was the prime cause of the back pain. Somebody's a pain in the neck or pain in the back, that's literal. So there are many ways to look at that, a big picture. And so I began studying a variety of things. Actually, I started first with hypoglycemia, and I realized there wasn't much real understanding of that. And it was my work with hypoglycemia where we had a very, very high, very, very high success rate as I began to see it as a multiple level thing which involved not only physical but emotional, all the chakra levels, problems with the aura, you know, not just sugar, okay? And then it was a multiple endocrine problem, not just pancreas, but a problem with the adrenals, uh, possibly, possibly a problem with the thyroid, possibly a problem with the hypothalamus, possibly a problem with the pituitary, and actually a certain amount of percentage of women had ovarian imbalances, which were the main cause of the sugar imbalance. I actually published something on that in Pavel Arola's book, a better, Hypoglycemia, A Better Approach. Has anyone ever heard of Pavel Arola? Time passes. He's left his body, but he was a kind of a, a leading naturopath from Sweden. I studied with him for seven years, learned a lot from him. And it was in his book that I had a whole discussion of all the, the subtleties of the whole thing. The one of the other things I note, which is a very good reason people say, well, why supplements? Can't I just eat a good diet? Well, you can. And I actually did research on it. I took a set of people, and I gave them supplements and homeopathics and everything, and generally we saw healing in about six weeks. I took people just on diet alone, the same kind of problems, hypoglycemia problems, you know, very matching group, and it generally took two years. So just so you know, a lot of things can happen if you really live the right optimal, super optimal lifestyle, you can get results, okay? Not as fast, not as strong, but you can get results. Okay? Most people aren't, are not necessarily committed to a, you know, a, a perfect lifestyle and maintaining it for a minimum of two years and then after that. So then we start looking at, uh, supplements is probably not the right word, but more intense bionutrients that amplify the healing. So that's another kind of perspective. And so that's where I began to proceed. I went from hypoglycemia and I began to see diabetes, but I also saw hypoglycemia as being a multi-dimensional thing. That was actually where I really began to see it. And there are many, many levels of that. Um, I'll give you an example, just so you see the multi-dimensional level. I had one person with hypoglycemia who was having all kinds of, let's say, negative entity experiences, not that they're any positive, particularly in his dreams at night. 
And it all healed. It all ended as soon as we were able to heal his hypoglycemia. So from that, I began to see as I began to check, wow, you know, all your chakras are off. You have holes from all the chakras in your aura. And you're very, very vulnerable because your blood sugar is really imbalanced. So as soon as we repaired the endocrine imbalance, it took care of the chakra imbalances and also took care of the holes in the aura. And all these attacks at night ended. I mean, they just completely ended without doing anything extra. So from that, I began to say, wow, these things are really interconnected. This is not just an interesting theory, but this is really very hardcore, very clear that these connections need to be paid attention to. And so as I evolved, then we began to see a holistic view, what we call today is holistic. Now there's one other point which is extremely important and also gives us some insight into herbs. And that point is the ratchet effect. I don't know if you know what a ratchet, but there, there's a, a line. Usually, in the holistic theory, we talk about spirit affects mind and, and affects emotions and affects body. That's the usual way we talk about it. But I, in the last 40 years, have seen some unusual things, including people I don't start with. Somebody took an antibiotic and it cleared their emotional imbalance and cleared their depression. How did that happen? Because it goes both ways. What you do on the physical plane affects you on the spiritual plane. The Chinese herbs are probably the best example of that, but how about an antibiotic? Nobody claims an antibiotic has a spiritual component. Yet we saw it. I, I saw it and say, oh, now I understand that it goes both directions. So not that you would, uh, let's say, advertise a certain nutrient, you know, doing that, but it can really do it. I can give you a good explanation now, which is really simple, is that, for example, take magnesium. Magnesium's needed for 300 neurotransmitter enzymatic interactions in the brain. One nutrient, 300. Obviously, if you're deficient in magnesium, and you supply magnesium, your brain is going to work better. And that's how it begins to work. I can't explain the antibiotic thing, but I have a feeling it was an antibiotic for a bladder infection. I mean, how mundane. But the, anti the bladder and kidneys are connected to fear and anxiety. So somehow it made a shift in the picture. But it's that's just speculation. Okay. So my main point is understand, and it's really important to understand, it goes both ways. It may go both ways. It's not just from the top down. So when we're looking at our uh, micronutrient concentrations, we may be in, a, in, effect, in, in effect affecting neurotransmitter function, and other sorts of functions. So I'm kind of throwing that out for a, a broader view that it's certainly not an allopathic view, which is, well, you know, you got a problem here, you know, have a symptom, we'll treat it. But the fact is, as you give these more uh, subtle nutrients, and I'm going to say more with the Chinese medicine, uh, they're working on multi-dimensions. And that's, you know, probably that the clearest way to understand that.